Good evening. <clears throat> Praise God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, good evening. I'm I'm going to come to you live tonight. Sorry for the late notice. I actually uh, haven't been live in a few weeks. As you know, I've been moving, so I'm in my new house. I actually just came up the stairs. I was going to just come up to my my new house. has a room upstairs that's all mine where I can just seek the Lord. And I was headed that way to go seek the Lord. And I just got this impression that I should go live now. So this was unrehearsed and uh, sorry for the late notice. But I have a word that's just I can't get away from. And it's, it's all I've been thinking about really uh, primarily for the last month. And I think it's uh, probably the, the word that I won't be able to go past until... I apprehend it with all my heart. <clears throat> so all I'm going to do is share it with you uh, and hope, hopefully instill that same passion and hunger in you. Um, there's, uh, I'm going to read out of 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And uh, I may just breeze through this entire chapter. It won't take us very long. And uh, tie it into a, a, another verse in Galatians 3. So 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Paul says this amazing statement. I think this is this is one of the most profound statements. I've read over it a lot, and I, I, I mean, I, it's meant something to me, but recently it's it's meant everything to me. Like this one statement, I'll, I'll just skip right to it. <clears throat> he says in verse 6, speaking of, well, starting in verse 5, he said, Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Now listen to verse 6. Who has, God, who has made us the word able ministers. He has made us able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. The letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Just think about this statement of Paul. That God made us his servants, those that are ministers. Now this may not be for everybody, but I, I believe most most people that are connected with me tend to be in some kind of a ministry, and I think everybody in, in some capacity should be ministering first unto the Lord and then unto people. But this idea that God made us able ministers of the new covenant. First, what does able mean? It means we have the ability. We're able. We're, we're competent. We're, uh, we're good at it. We're, we're a success in the Spirit. And Paul said God made him, made us, his ministers who are in the spirit, able ministers of the new covenant. So this is the new covenant. This is an able ministry in the old covenant. It's able ministry in the new covenant, which is not of the letter, but of the spirit. So New Testament ministry is the ministry in the spirit. I mean, we can't emphasize that enough. Uh, and, and the idea is that the verse before that he said is not that we are sufficient of ourselves. And uh, if there's one thing I think that's plaguing ministry these days, it's the self-sufficiency. You know how easy it is. You learn a few verses or you get, you get good at sermonizing or you get into some kind of a routine that you're proficient at and you just hit cruise control and you just find yourself going through the motions, but you're not, you're not ministering in a way that actually demands you to be completely dependent on God. Hey, Miguel, Julie, God bless you guys. So it's easy to hit a to get involved in a kind of ministry that you can perform in the flesh. That's what I'm saying. And and the idea of the new covenant minister is that he's ministering in the spirit and then through the spirit because it's by the spirit. And if it's not that, it's not new covenant. Uh one verse I've been using a lot lately uh when I when I've been speaking to people is if he, is I'm sorry, Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Acts 10:38, how that God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So the anointing of the Holy Ghost was placed upon Jesus by God. Now I know that's a, uh, that's a mind-boggling thing because Jesus was God from the beginning. But yet when he came to earth, he emptied himself of his authority of his of his deity in a sense he was still god but he was god as man so that he he emptied himself philippians 2 tells us and became obedient unto death so there was a, re, a removal uh, temporarily of his of his glory that he once had in heaven 
And when he came to earth, he was just a man like you and me. He was a baby like you and me. His mom and dad had to change his diaper like you and me. Feed him like you and me. He had to learn obedience, it said, through the things that he suffered like you and me. He had to in all ways be tempted as we are tempted yet without sin. So he had to endure, uh, experience, partake in, taste of every aspect of humanity to partake of our weakness, of our infirmities, of our struggles, of every part of us. Jesus Christ had to become that. But when he became a full 30 years, it says, God called him first to the wilderness to, te to test him, to allow the devil to tempt him. And when he came through that temptation, he was, uh, I'm sorry, first he went to the Jordan and was baptized uh, by John in the water. And then the, the father put the Holy Ghost upon him and then led him out into the wilderness to be tempted. Showing us that the same pattern that he calls us to, he called his own son to. So Jesus Yes, he was God, but the, the acts that he performed as a man were done in the same way, the ministry that he did, was done in the same way that God calls us to minister. In other words, the same spirit that anointed Jesus to go out and do good is what we're called to be anointed with to go out and do the same ministry. Not a different ministry, not a lesser ministry, but God, the, the beauty of God is that he calls us to share in the same ministry that he's been engaged with. And that's not a new concept. When he was, hey Gary, God bless you brother. When he was, Johnny, God bless you. When he was in the, in the beginning of time when he created Adam and Eve and put them in the garden, he wanted to share his creation, his dominion, his authority with mankind. So his ministry in that sense on earth was to be performed through man. And he didn't hold back from man. He even let man name the animals. Man was an integral part in the ministry of God from the time, uh, uh, from the beginning of time. Now, when Jesus came to earth, Jesus is the pattern of New Testament ministry. Therefore, he couldn't just go out and do the ministry because he was God, as God. Otherwise, it wouldn't be fair for him to call us into the same ministry because we're not God. But yet he does it as a man under the anointing of the Holy Ghost so that he can be the pattern. He emptied himself of his authority and, and received a new, a, new, a new kind of authority, which was the anointing of the Holy Ghost on his physical body so that he could perform the work of God through the Spirit, not through his personal deity, but through the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon his body. And he calls us New Testament saints into this same kind of ministry. Now look again at, with that said, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 again. Who has made us, God has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. So God has made us to be. He's called us to be. He empowers us to be able ministers. In other words, able to do the very work that Jesus began. Jesus said that in John 14, the works I did, you will do also. And greater works than these will you do because I go to my father. And the next thing he said after talking about going to the father was sending down the Holy Ghost upon the church so that they would be empowered with not a lesser spirit, but the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwelleth in our mortal flesh. So he empowers us to do the same ministry that he did by the same spirit that he did it through. That is what it means to be an able minister of this New Testament. And anything less than that is something far below what God has called us to. He said, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the call of God to the saint. And unless we are filled with the Holy Ghost, we won't be able to do the ministry of the Holy Ghost. And so there's a lesser ministry that we can get inundated and busy doing, which is ministry below the ministry of the new covenant. And we call it the gospel. We call it New Testament, but it's something below what God called us into. Now, another verse I'll, I'll give you before we go on to qualify what I'm saying is in Galatians chapter three. In fact, I'll just read it to you. Galatians chapter three. <laughs> Another, another verse that I've read so many times and I'm just now getting a new revelation on, on what he's saying here. Verse 5, Galatians chapter 3, verse 5. He that ministereth the, to you the Spirit. Listen to those words. He that ministereth to you the Spirit. This is how he's defining in his, in his life, in his circle, those that came out and did the ministry of God. He called those 
those ministers, he, he, he described them as those that were ministering the spirit unto the people. And, and I would say that's how we should see ourselves. And unless we see ourselves in that light, what are we then? What are we, what are we ministering out of if it's not out of that flow of the spirit within? It's very likely that we're ministering out of, out of our humanness, out of the human spirit. And maybe even your spirit is born again by the spirit, but you can still be born again by the spirit and minister below the ministration of the spirit. We have to see what we're handing out to people. What we're giving out to people isn't just information, although it is information, but it's not just information. What we're giving out to people is the spirit. We are literally called to administer as a doctor administers medicine, as a lawyer administrates the law. We are called to administer, to release the Spirit of God onto people. Now, you can't do that unless you're walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit. And if God had His way in us, that's exactly what we'd be doing. We'd be so filled, so focused, so in, inundated and in walking in the life of the Spirit of God that we would have that to give away to others. Otherwise, any, the only thing we have to give out to people is information. And let me just say, we are being inundated with fleshly ministry. I mean, everywhere we turn, people under the cloak of Christianity are administering words, but to no profit. You know, something that marks the ministry of the Spirit is freedom, where the Spirit of the Lord is. And that's back in that chapter, and we'll probably go back and read some of it. In 2 Corinthians 3, he said that, 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 that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. But guess what? Where the Spirit of the Lord isn't, there's bondage. And you know, there's a type of ministry where you take the Bible and you make bondage for people. You make condemnation and, and just always putting people into a certain type of captivity, even by the word. You know, all these people that are straining over gnats and swallowing camels, picking out s statements of the New Testament just to argue it and fight it and then looking at only the parts of the New Testament that condemn you or make it hard or you know try to pour so much conviction. And I'm all about the truth. I'm all about conviction. I'm all about holiness. And anybody that knows me knows I preach repentance from sin, from dead works, holiness, righteousness. But guess what? There's a way in which you can take the New Testament and just heap bondage on people, cause arguments, and just want to use the scripture in, in, a, in, in, in a way that it wasn't intended to be, per, per, it was intended to produce freedom. It was intended to produce power. It was intended to produce liberty. It was intended to produce faith. It was, it was intended to produce the very life of Jesus within us. And, and there's a way in which you can take the scripture and bring death to people. There's a way in which you can bring, bring the scripture and not produce the life that it otherwise, because the scripture is alive. But there's a way in which you administer the scripture through the flesh and it brings death. And what Paul said is, those people that are just administering the letter, just letters, just words, they're ministering death to the people. But those ministers that are filled with the Spirit administer the life of the Spirit through the Word. So they're still preaching the same Word, only they're preaching it by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And there comes forth something out of that minister that is life. You know, Paul said this. If it was all about words, uh, uh, then pa Paul missed it. Because Paul said this. He said, look, I wish that I was with you right now so that I might impart unto you some spiritual gift. That's the way Paul looked at his administration. He, he preached the word. He wrote the word. He was a man of the word. He obviously, he obviously was the one that came up with most of the New Testament by the Holy Ghost. He was all about the word, but he was also all about the spirit of the word. He was about administering the spirit. Of, he knew he was filled with the spirit. He knew that the very life of Christ lived within him. He knew that when he touched, that the life of God was coming through his touch. When he spoke, the, the, the spirit of the living God was coming through his speaking, that everything that he was engaged in was the engagement of the spirit. And so he saw himself administering the spirit as a doctor administers medicine. So he wanted to touch the people. I want to impart. He told Timothy, stir up the gift that's within thee, that's in thee by the laying on of my hands. He, he, he put his hands on people and he imparted the spirit of the living God into those people. He spoke the word of God and the word of God carried with it the anointing of the spirit that broke the yoke and set people free. Every spirit-filled vessel who's walking in the spirit, when he speaks, his words carry with them the anointing of God to break the yoke. 
If you want a real clear example of that, just go reach Acts chapter 8 real slowly. It's, all, it's become my favorite chapter recently. Acts 8 is so amazing. That idea that a man named Philip, who's full, it says, of the Holy Ghost, goes to a city and leads the entire city of Samaria to Jesus Christ, both small and great man and woman, including the sorcerer that held that city hostage, Simon. All of them believed and were baptized, and Peter and John came and laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. These were men filled with the Holy Ghost. When they went to a city and declared the gospel, it brought freedom to the entire city. They weren't just word boxing, trying to outmatch each other with more words. Paul said the kingdom of God is not word, it's power. It must be a demonstration by the Spirit. So I'm, I'm saying this not to condemn anybody. I'm saying this to cast hope into your mind that you would see I think, you know, people want to do ministry. They think I got to get good at preaching and you should get good at preaching. You should know the word, be in, instant, in season, out of season, ready to reprove, rebuke, correct, to encourage, to give the word of the Lord. But to see yourself not just as a minister called to administer the word of God, but to see yourself as a new covenant minister. See, they, they administered words out of the old covenant and that was bringing death upon the people. But in the new covenant, not only do you administer the word to people, it's important to have the word of God in your, in your mouth and ready to speak. How shall they hear lest you preach? But it's not enough to just preach. You have to say within yourself, I have to have something within my life that I can administer beyond just language, beyond just doctrine, although that's important, but to administer the very life and very, the very power, the very freedom, the very anointing of the Holy Ghost. And see, that requires you to be in a certain, in a certain fellowship with the Holy Ghost. It's not enough. You can't just hit cruise control. You know, pa pastors stop praying. I know I was one and I had stopped praying because I got so busy in ministry. I got so busy trying to just keep things going and you lose your connection with the Holy Ghost and yet you still keep doing ministry. You know, that's the thing. People don't stop doing ministry when, they're, when they stop getting filled with the Holy Ghost. They continue on doing ministry, but they don't do it in the power of the Holy Ghost. They hit cruise control. They're living on last year's anointing, last 10 years ago's anointing, or what they learned five years ago. They're just recreating the same thing over and over because, they they're hitting cruise control. And because living in the Spirit, it requires a daily activity, and it's not easy. So it's, it's easier to hit cruise control and just go, go into an, an automaton state where you're just acting, play acting, regurgitating the same old dead words. But the Spirit of God is always moving. He's always active. The Word of God is living, powerful, sharp. It's always moving. It's always active. And so God requires us ministers of this new covenant to be active and moving and seeking so that we're not just saying, oh, I got to give a good word or I've got to share a good testimony or I want to sound clever when I speak. It's... I want to release the Spirit of God to the people that I meet. I want the people of God to feel and sense and, 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 and detect there's something more to this man than mere information or mere words. What he says, I can feel God calling me to himself. There's something more transacted when we speak, when we touch, when we pray, when we meet people. There's something more transacted, or at least there should be, than information. There's something of the very life and nature and impetus and power of God that comes through the man of God and into the hearers so that they detect this is the life and this is the freedom. And they want to climb up into God and they have hope when they hear and they have faith when they hear and they cry out to God and they repent of their sins because it's the spirit of God in the man pulling the, 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 the hearer to himself. And it's up to us. The Bible says, do not be drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's a command, but it's also a requirement that's put upon us. God didn't say, don't worry, I'm just going to keep you full of the Holy Ghost all the time. He said, you, believer, saint, Christian, be filled. Because if you're not filled, you can't give out what you don't have. And the people are starving and dying in their sins and in their Christian and non-Christian alike starving and dying in their sin because they don't know they don't have freedom and the spirit of god is our only answer we can't fight this thing politically we can't fight this thing informationally we can't just get right doctrine and correct everybody's doctrine by getting it right we need right doctrine we need to be students of the word but we need the holy ghost we need to be those who administer as a doctor administers medicine, get this picture. You're administering the Holy Ghost to the needs of the people. You can't do that unless you're filled, unless you're walking right. 
So, your homework is to go back and read 2 Corinthians 3 because I'm going to be done now. But I want to read the last part of 2 Corinthians 3. Make sure you read that whole passage. But listen to what he says at the end. Verse 17, now the, where, now the Lord is that spirit. That, that would take a lot to unpack. But the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. There always will be freedom where the spirit of God is. Where the spirit of God isn't, there will be bondage. There will be condemnation. There will be every kind of evil work. Because even if it's you take the Bible, but you remove the spirit out of the Bible, all you're left with is information. And you can take that. And, and how many different people are taking the Bible and coming to some of the far-fetched conclusions with it? Oh, man, I don't even want to give examples of some of the things. People take the Bible and say the Bible says this, and it's totally and absolutely false. Well, they're taking the scripture, they're taking the Bible, but they're taking it without the Spirit. And what you end up with is bondage, because the Spirit is what brings the Word of God to life. But we with all, with an open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now listen to what he says. Therefore, seeing that this is true, that we're called into this thing. He said, seeing we have received this ministry and as we have received mercy, we do not faint, we do not quit, but we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. This is an encouragement of the highest kind. If you want to be a minister of the new covenant, which is a minister of the spirit, which is somebody who administers the spirit to other people by the laying on of hands, by the preaching of the word, by the speaking, by the praying, by any capacity. There are so many ways that we can release the spirit of God through our physical bodies. What a calling. But seeing that we've been called into this type of ministry, Paul said we have renounced. That is to say we have shouted out, shouted down all the hidden things of dishonesty. All insincerity, all hidden, lukewarm, sinful, carnal compromise. We've called those things out. We've laid it all down. We have become empty and clean and open and naked before God. We're not hiding things. We're not living a double life. We're not going to church and putting a church face on and going home and living a different way. We are the same every single day and we ought to be if we are seeking the ministry of the Spirit because the ministry of the Spirit is the minister of reality. One of, the, one of the most probably important definitions of the word truth is, is reality. That means reality is what's real. So the spirit of truth is the spirit of reality. He's the spirit of what's real. If we're not living the real life every day, all day, and we don't change between people, we are the same all the time. We have no hope of being ministers of the spirit. So we have renounced, Paul said, the hidden things of dishonesty, that hidden secondary hypo hypocrisy, that, that, that life that we don't want people to know about. We've denounced all of that. We are, we are living before God in all sincerity, not walking in craftiness, not being a trickster, not being a, 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 a fake, but a being a real, not handling the word of God with deceit or deceitfully, not, tr not with trickery. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. What a picture. You see yourself in the sight of God. You see everyone around you and you commend yourself to their conscience. In other words, you live in such a way to be clean so that people can't accuse you. People can't point the finger at you. You live as clean as you possibly can. You're living a life of transparency, of, of uprightness, of purity, of devotion before God. Because you know that the spirit of God is a clean spirit. Notice the Bible says he cast out unclean spirits. Most of the time, demons were referred to as unclean spirits. Well, the Spirit of God is the cleanest spirit. He's per perfect purity and cleanliness. And to walk in the Spirit, to administer the Spirit, you and I, we have to have clean lives, clean hands, and a pure heart. Transparent, open, naked before God. Not hiding, not, not, hypocr not, not living in hypocrisy, living in transparency. So that we can be conduits, because we see our hands as conduits that the Spirit of God wants to impart His power through to help people. Our mouth, our words are the conduit with which God can pour out His words, His language. The word of God with anointing that breaks yokes. We see our entire, our eyes are the eyes of God. We can't allow them to be on the unclean thing. Our ears, these are the vessels of God. We can't allow them to be defiled. Now I know it's impossible to avoid all defilement with all the images and all the sounds in the earth. But as much as lies on us, we don't allow the unclean thing. God said, come out from among them and be ye separate. Touch not the unclean thing and then I will receive you. God is looking for people 
and it's not just clergy. What I love about Philip and what I love about Stephen is these men were, were not clergy as we know the word. These men were wait, waiting tables of the widows, and yet God anointed them with the Holy Ghost and faith, it says. Power, the Holy Ghost, and faith, and they turned cities upside down by the Spirit of God. They weren't learned it. They hadn't been Christians very long, but they had one thing that's the difference maker, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, so that God found residency where the blood had cleansed, the Spirit could flow right through these men's bodies, their, their mouth, their words came with such power. Their hands healed the sick. Their voice cast out demons. They were doing miracles throughout the city. They weren't clergy. They were, the, they, were, they were the lower on the totem pole. They were waiting tables, but God had a higher call for them. They became ministers of the Spirit. So I believe God would have all of us who are seeking real New Testament experience to seek the highest level of ministry, which is not being the best preacher in the world. It's being the one the, that whom the spirit of the living God can flow through with unhindered access to the life because they've separated themselves and have given themselves to the ministry of the Holy Ghost. I love you guys. We'll be going uh, live as soon as I can. I'm getting situated and I look, look forward to just sharing with you as God speaks. God bless you guys and I love y'all.